Alright, enough for the painting. That's done. It's all nice. It's got two coats of paint, two coats of primer, two coats of paint, two coats, coats, coats of lacquer. So it should be. It doesn't really come across on the camera, but it's shiny and nice. One thing that I took extra care of is not to cover with paint these gaps here where water is meant to drain out. That's important because then if water gets stuck there, slowly but surely the frame will rot from the inside and, and then you die really. I've just realized that in order for me to put the engine on this frame, I need to do this also. All right, this is the bolt from here. It's orient. I don't think it matters, but the nut was on the chain side. I know this is the chain side because it's got these. It's the same size as the top of the shock absorber. Now for the main bolt, this one here that holds this metal thingy to this metal thingy. Uh, the bolt side is 14 and the nut side on the other side which seems to have a washer and this one has a washer is my guess is that it's Australia 19 too big 17 you know it's always your initial guess yep 17 on the other side that's the bolt, it's out. For orientation purposes, the bolt side is on the chain guard side. This metal thing, so that's the wheel, this is how this sits on the bike, that's the bottom. This goes like that. The hole with the grey gray washer goes in here, this one goes in there, and then that holds the top of the shock. This thing here seems like it's got some oil and it's sealed or... I'll have to see how this is working, really. I need to mention in the service manual it says nothing about the shock absorber at the back. So... I don't know. There's another one of those oil thingies here. And then this metal piece should come off it's like that somehow uh, it doesn't come off because this stupid cable tie there there's this pink dust coming from the bottom of this shock absorber not sure if this means that some oil came out of it or if if any oil goes out of these but I'm guessing if they're shock absorbers they have oil inside right I've just figured it out, so there's this piston here that tends to lift when, so inside here, I don't know if you can see it, it tends to lift when you go towards 5 and it comes back when you go backwards, hopefully it comes back by itself. Yeah, look, so when I'm bringing it back, see? It goes back in. Now I'm taking it back out. Sweet, so that means it works. So we next up this bar that holds the brake brake drum. 14 14. There was a a safety thing there through the shaft of that thread. So you take that out first. For orientation purposes, this bar is flattened on the end. The end is the end towards the wheel. Let's see if it's symmetrical. Alright, see how it is like that? That's the part that goes in here. And then it goes up and then down and straight. This is the part that goes to the wheel. And this is how the bolt and nut look. The bolt has this... Uh, indentation here. 
now what I'm gonna do is attempt to remove the wheel and this arm over here. I think this shock absorber is fucked on Dolores because I can push it and it comes it's like it doesn't have a shock absorber in there you can feel just the spring pushing the bike back I'll remove the main stand let's see if I can I'll remove the side stand and remove all the back end and if the bike sits on this without the back end then I'm happy because I can then proceed to take the engine off and restore it and shit like that while I can put the bot the engine in the frame you know what I mean and the front end I can put in the frame back and stuff like that so I can slowly start transferring parts from one to another this rear end seems to be in way better shape than mine it's so rusty and stuff this is still gonna be restored but for the electric project why am I doing that? I don't know yeah I'm not gonna film how I'm taking this off because you already know from the previous so I'm gonna get jiggy with it moment of truth Let's see if it stays on the main stand. Because if it does, this changes things a lot. Right. Yeah, man. Sick. I can remove the rear arm. Sweet. Now, one thing that strikes me odd is this red soil thing that came from both motorcycles from the depths of the shock absorber what is this shit seems to be crumbly and stuff is that the leakage okay where were we that arm is off it's being washed somewhere down there now this shock absorber I went online and people actually refurbished these so you change the seals the oil and all that so in order for you to release this uh, spring and take out the shock you need to compress the spring now the tool that I have I used it for my Honda when I replaced the front shock absorbers that are the same in a coil now this doesn't catch with both teeth but I don't care about that as long as it catches with two you know so I'll put one this side one the other side compress the spring take this out I've seen how it's done uh, so if you take this washer out then the spring kinda uh -oh. Excuse me, gets loose. Yes, so this was a success apart from one thing. This cylinder kind of bent from the tooth. So I'll try and... I don't know what. I'll try and do something. This came out like that. And then this came out. Now I'll release the spring and the shock will be mine. Update, it's off. And this is not a metal piece, it's a plastic piece, so it doesn't matter if it bends. That's fine. This is the spring, seems to be the same either side. Oh no, it's thicker here, it's fatter here where the base is and thinner where the top is. Now let's test this shot. It comes back, which means it's not completely. It doesn't come back, which means it's fucked. Oh. So. It's kind of 
kind of stuck, and then when you help it, check this out, it comes back. Right. Now I need to figure out how to open it further. Or even if you can open it. I'm not sure. I'll take the other one apart also to see what's going on. But I've got a feeling this one is way better than the other one. Correction. What well, I said earlier about the small part being on the in here, actually the biggest diameter is there. The smallest diameter is on the base. Now let's see. I thought this is gonna be shot shot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> check this out man. What the fuck is this? A pump? This is gone. Right, so take this thing off. First thing you gotta take is this uh, collar, whatever it's called, that holds this rubber piece here. You just put a plier in there, and this one just, I don't know it's, if it's supposed to be that soft, but it was really soft. So it went out. Now, this rubber piece, if it doesn't come out, just put a piece in. Put a screwdriver in, you know, and then try and work it out. It's gonna come out like that. This is the next day. I lost count. I don't know how many days. This is day X plus one. Let's start from there. This is day X plus one. This guy is next. This is called the swing arm. The swing arm. Uh, I had to choose between this one from Dolores, which looks a bit better, and on the underside, and this one from Eve. This one from Eve doesn't look too promising, really. Um, yeah, a lot of the bodywork of Eve except this beautiful frame right here it's probably not going to be used because uh, it stayed in you know, rain and shit and I'll need to take a lot of time into restoring them and the frame took like three days to get it to how it is now and I would like to finish this bike in this lifetime, so I'm picking and choosing the best parts from one bike to put on the other bike. Uh, the engine needs a bit of reconditioning also, but a tiny bit, like no, no biggie, I don't have to sand it. I just have to refill the, the bolt patches with some paint and clean it up nicely put some degreaser and uh, yeah today what's left of that um, paint removal disc I'm gonna be probably using it on on this swing arm I have hmm, I don't have a lot left on it I'll try and make with this yeah see what I can do with this Got a system. First, I go with this disc. This is amazing. Like this stuff is amazing. Take it off there. And then I'm like, when I finish with that, I'm going wire brush with drill with wire brush different thicknesses and stuff to get all the, the rust and shit and then what's left sandblasting and that's perfect perfect
So inside here there's a bearing. I can't press it out because I don't have one of them presses. So I'm just gonna leave it in here and shove some paper in there. Toilet paper. Uh, right, that's one. And two, note to self, this is the orientation on the bike. So that's the rear end. I'm going to take these oil caps and put them in the same orientation as I found them. This is the shaft of the bearing. You'll see in a minute. That's the other one. And this just pushes out like that. There it is. And now it's time to play the paper game. That's the thing that I was telling you about. The alcohol. Take a clean clean rag. Give it a bit, give it a bit of a good cleaning. Or you can do that. You know? If this thing works. Take a compressor. Yeah, man. Another day, another hour, another whatever. This is day X plus two. I've painted the last components of the suspension. That's from the front fork. The spring, everything. Hope I'm not gonna scratch them when I put them back, but they're all nice and black and nice. Probably the spring will get scratched, because, you know. Yeah, and uh, now the assembly process starts. Lucky for me, I have a model here from the old bike of how parts go together. Yeah, let's see this. For assembly, it's pretty much the opposite of the disassembly. Yeah, the only tricky bit will be compressing the spring to put it back on the shock absorber. Which, by the way, I don't know how to dismantle. I've tried, but it doesn't really want to go off this. So since this is still good, I'm gonna put it back and in the meantime measure the other one so that I can uh, see if I can find one or buy one or something. Yep. And the compressed length is 26.5. Or 9.123, 9.2 inches, let's say. This is the broken one. That's why I can compress it. The thickness of it is 45 millimeters. This is a time lapse of me reassembling that shock absorber mechanism. You start by compressing the spring. Uh, putting back the shock absorber, then decompress the spring and uh, reconnect everything as in all the bolts and nuts and that's it. I find that when you put it back from frame like zero to avoid scratching it, it's better to work on it hanged. Uh, what I'm gonna do is so I put the swing arm back and then I'll put this hub back and then put the sh the front shocks, so the fork back and then put the wheels, if this is gonna hold it and then drop it down, because, um, yeah, to avoid any scratches 
these are the balls for uh, the fork hub. Now there's a little trick you can do to make your life way easier because otherwise it's impossible. You take one side of the bearing and you trench it into Vaseline. This way the balls stay stuck to that side with the Vaseline and then you put them back on. The annoying part is going to be down there. I'll show you how I'll do it. If uh, from painting you got some paint on this, take a bit of wire wool and just scrape it off. This wire wool is insane man. It's got so many usages. Lucky for me the Japanese people thought about this because I had to learn this the hard way on bicycles uh, where if you took the, the wheel hub off from the back wheel you had loads of these tiny balls and you didn't have this channel here to keep them on you know yeah, there was no channel and they were falling off so I had to like put a lot of Vaseline here and just shove the balls in Vaseline Luckily for me, the Japanese people are extremely smart. Channel or no channel, you still have to put Vaseline in there. Loads. And now you take the balls, put them in here. I know there are 18 on each side, because I've, I've counted them. Work your way around and then put the hub back on. And we're back today. I started the day with like a massive cursing session. Because I had this stand which had some rubber feet, but the rubber peeled off some of my paint from this. So, yeah, that wasn't okay. <laughs> Started throwing things around and shit, broke my glasses. God damn it. Now I need to, I need to fix the glasses. Yeah, but how I solved this is I took some of this paint like engine paint that I had left and I've put it in here that's why you see this nasty overspray I dried it with a um, with a heat gun and then applied some paint and not paint uh, just like this thick tape if you cut it nicely it makes like a nice sticker so I've put this here so next time I use this plastic thing nothing's gonna happen in addition I had this like super soft leather and this spray trim fix adhesive pretty good spray and I stuck fucking leather on this rubber piece so now it's really nice and soft I solemnly swear today, 25 of April, that spray paint makes no more sense to me. This is painted using the, using the compressor and the paint spray. Man, spray paints are like fake this. I swear to God. Everything's adjustable, airflow, pressure, paint. Look at this, man. Yeah, adios, spray paint. This is it. It's like a cheap Stanley one. I mean, it comes in a set for this compressor. Fucking life-changing, swear to God. With this one, everything's like pressure adjustable even from the trigger spray paints go like pfft, straight away max and you overflow the paint 
so easily on spray, spray plane. This is so much finer than mist. And, and I just, this is the first time I'm painting with it, but I'm blown out of my mind, man. It's so good. This is the paint I'm using. A water-based paint. It's amazing. Another day, more painting. I managed to fix these glasses with some uh, uh, heat shrink. Now with with stuff like this, it's a correlation between the time you spend on it and how good it looks. For instance, now I'm taking my time until I go crazy. I know there will be a time when I'll be like, "Fuck it, I need to finish it." But until then. I'm taking my time to scrape all these screws of rust and shit so when I put them back I give them a bit of a paint lucky for me everything's black in the back so I can just spray a bit with the compressor on top of the screws this way I'll protect the screws and the bike will look way better hey see the screw here not looking really nice wire wool Check this out. Did a little pause there because uh, I was like, mm, something's not smelling right. And it was me. I was smelling like a bum. So I rectified that. This is day X plus three, uh, where I think I'm gonna change Eve's name to Dolores because there's been so many parts from Dolores that I've listed to go into her. Plus Dolores is a cooler name and she's a cooler character from a show called Westworld sick fucking show with Anthony Hopkins so <coughs> since I finally got my key in the post that fits all of them saddle lock the tank and the new ignition best bet the best bet would be since this is used to activate Dolores her name will be Dolores from now on Dolores man <coughs> yes now uh, going back to this wire wool to clean the screws like I said before there will come a time when I'll be like fuck this I need to get this bike finished today is not that time so I'm um, continuing <laughs> and now the moment we've all been waiting for the engine transplant um, I'll start just like the other one taking the head cover off the head and the cylinders checking the piston rings checking the head Maybe do some valve clearance, I don't know yet, but I'll, I'll see. Checking the conditions of these, hopefully I'll get four mint ones. Uh, for the process, uh, I'm not going to film it, because you already know how to do it from the previous episodes. Check episode 1, 2, 3, 4, God knows what, there's a playlist on YouTube. Uh, it's going to be linked to the end of every clip. So yeah, in order for me to go lightning speed and finish this process today, uh, I'm not going to film it. So next time you'll see me, this engine will be on that bike. Or no, 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 no. What, I'm, what I am going to film is the putting back of the engine. Yeah, including changing the gaskets and shit, because that's important. Uh, hopefully not changing the pistons or piston rings but I'll see so that's the reassembly of the engine probably on this bike will be filmed so next time you next time you see me that's gonna have some engine on for the valve cap I've cleaned it all with engine degreaser uh, oven degreaser sorry 
still has some shit, but it's way better than what the old one used to be. You will have some silicone in this channel here. Do not use something like this because you destroy the, the flat surface. You can use like a mild steel brush, but like this is way coarser than that. And just go by hand, work your way in this channel. Then you get the silicone out. And then clean it by air. Hang it and respray it if you have to. I'll have to respray this because uh, it's not in perfect condition. All the paint is on it except some tiny bits. But I just want it spot on, you know. Alright, it's ready. Make sure you cover what needs to be covered. And then spray it. I'm using this for the engine because it's like a high temperature paint. Now this is what I'm talking about. This looks like a mother. You know? Look at this. Yeah man. 